introduce Natalia and Anna, who are Brazilian and have been Brazilian activists, and they will tell you about their experience there. I think Natalia is going to lead off. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I would like to start. We were debating about what we could be talking today because there's so many aspects, uh, so many problematic things that we need to discuss in Brazil. But I think uh, one thing we can discuss today that you guys can really actually help us is that now Brazil, uh, the, the right-wing fac uh, faction of Bolsonaro, they are dividing des themselves uh, between, um, I don't know, the completely um, those people that invent uh, crazy theories like flat earth and creationism and those people that want to just uh, militarize part, let's talk about uh, giving uh, gun privilege to those who deserve it. I mean, when I say deserve it, those who can afford guns. Mm -hmm. um, so, they are, they are not a stable government. Bolsonaro is in power in 19 <laughs> days and they are not stable already. They are already fighting amongst themselves. Um, the left in Brazil is exactly what you're speaking. Nobody knows what we can do at the moment. The, our own Communist Party, uh, PCdoB, is supporting now the same candidate for the the deputy chamber, uh, Rodrigo Maia, that is supported by Bolsonaro. They don't want to support, uh, the left is extremely uh, fragmented in Brazil. Uh, some support Lula's arresting, others are completely against. Uh, every time we say uh, that the charges are changing all the time, our judiciary system is extremely corrupt and extremely uh, politize it. Uh, the, the judge that uh, charged Lula is now the Minister of Justice and he's also, Bolsonaro's son is also involved in corruption scandals and now they, their speech about we are fighting against corruption changed it to we are fighting against communism. So no one is speaking about uh, corruption again. <coughs> People are only speaking about um, communism and ideologies and indoctrinations and things that don't make sense in, in never in the Brazilian reality. And socially speaking, those uh, those behaviors are causing a great matter of violence in an already chaotic uh, country. Uh, they only this year already 30 women were uh, murdered by their uh, spouses or immediately relatives. Uh, LGBTs are being again victims of bashing. Uh, so, and now we have a, a, a police that it won't help you and they never help, I guess. Uh, it, <laughs> but. We have like a sort type of feeling that, oh, they might be there for you, but now we are, if you are not these people, these crazy right-wingers, you are scared of the police because uh, the government is giving them uh, carte blanche to do whatever they want to us. The police will be um, giving permission to kill and won't be prosecuted later for killing, if they are killing on duty, or if they are feeling that they are being, their life is at risk. So in a country where we have a, a, a black population that is already marginalized, and we have a, poly, a, a extremely racist so, a society, it's extremely problematic when you say that the police can kill, because last year we have cases of people that were shot because the police thought that the person was carrying a gun, but it was actually an umbrella, um, a bag, anything. So, um, 
the, the what you were and you were saying about the the, the old Im problem with immigration um, between the, the migration between Brazilians is not more the, the focus anymore. It changed already. <laughs> Now people are talking, about, uh, we are, they are reproducing speeches from people like Tommy Robinson in Brazil uh, to say that uh, we have to be aware of the Muslim invasion, uh, that we need, we are, we need to be, be fearful because the Europe is in the hands of Muslims, because the, 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 the opening borders from Europe, from Europe uh, are causing a, a, a a fragment, fragmentation in society, that the, the mayor of London has a Muslim army. Things are being said by, not by people supporting Bolsonaro, but Bolsonaro himself, by Bolsonaro's sons. They are uh, reproducing fake news from Europe in Brazil to, to, to make people be uh, afraid of an invisible enemy that does not exist in a reality. The fact is, uh, the triple of people uh, are leaving Brazil, uh, of those are coming in. We have an uh, uh, unbalanced <coughs> migration flux there. So <coughs> when we have a president putting fears uh, of immigration in a country that was formed by immigrants, my own grandmother was an immigrant in Brazil, uh, Anna's uh, grandfather was an immigrant as well, so uh, we, we have a, 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 a complete uh, disrespect by our own traditions, our own uh, history. Uh, I don't remember uh, never studying uh, a, a period when we, we pe people were like talking uh, bad things about immigration in Brazil. I, I don't remember that. Speaking, they talk about immigration from uh, countries that <coughs> Brazil helped with the UN during Lula's. So there are a lot of Haitians, a lot of people from Africa who speak Portuguese, the Portuguese part of Africa, and in Brazil, and people that you you see occupying places that before they wouldn't like. Uh, black people from Africa in universities lectures. You wouldn't see that before Lula, that they did these arrangements. And you see these people now, the bourgeoisie is fighting these people, is fighting patients that are working in health restaurants and like normal jobs and it's basically racism. <laughs> it's, not, it's horrible. And um, we, we don't know uh, uh, the the, the news in Brazil are not from Europe, are not, uh, not even people, and are not coming, not even from vehicles like BBC, like mainstream vehicles. They are coming from crazy places like Braveheart and I don't know where else they are. The BBC is extremely left. Yes, in Brazil, is a BBC is a communist. So, <laughs> we, we, we really don't know uh, who, what's going to happen because every day we are seeing that they are already crumbling. Our biggest, I think we are, our most uh, concrete fear is that Bolsonaro won't be president for long. Uh, but his vice president is a very, is a very smart man, but a very dangerous one because he's also a military. And the militaries, they, uh, they are trying to complete their project that they have during the dictatorship period uh, between 64 and 85. And I believe that what they are trying to do now is a continuation of the, the, the project, that is uh, to dismantle indigenous areas, to um, uh, fragmentate the fragmentation of politics, to, to make the left seem uh, uh, unreliable and weak. And to the, the precarization of public schools, the precarization of uh, superior the, the colleges and universities, um, the privatization of the free healthcare. Brazil has the biggest uh, healthcare, uh, free healthcare system in the world. It's not perfect, but we have healthcare. And people. Um, they, they spread rumors, they spread news saying that the, the, 
the companies, the private companies would be best because if the government doesn't have to invest in free health care, the people will, uh, they don't need to, to, to pay more in taxes, so people will have to pay for a private health plan plan. So they, they put this type of uh, rumors, news, I don't know, theories uh, in, a in a population that is already fragilized by inequity, but we are still living the, the, the ghosts of colonialism in Brazil. And so it's really difficult to make people understand that they are being manipulated. Uh, it's like we are speaking. Uh, they act like uh, it's a brainwash. They act like they are in a cult. Um, with Bolsonaro's son's uh, case of corruption, um, <coughs> They are, no, this is a lie, but no, we have like reports, uh, we have recordings, we have, no, everything is manipulated. Everything that is saying bad things about their government, they will say that is manipulation, that is uh, video uh, in interference and computer effects. Nobody believes uh, that Bolsonaro would be going against the people. <coughs> we. Actually, we can say that, uh, politically speaking, he's going against the people because he doesn't have a plan yet. And all the plans that he tried to implement so far, uh, he took the decision back. So we really don't know, uh, uh, now we don't have anything concrete about Brazil. Do we have anything concrete for now? No. <laughs> We don't have anything like this is final, that is fine. We, we don't have that. Um, the only concern that we are having to deal in right now that is more uh, palpable is the social uh, changes that the Bolsonaro election causes with the increase of intolerance and the increase of uh, violent outbursts. And now, uh, I think last week, Bolsonaro uh, signed, uh, I don't know how, because it was in our constitution, a uh, document saying that people will be more easy access to guns in Brazil. Um, a country that is already extremely violent, like I said. So, because he said that people will, ha will be able to obtain guns if they uh, have like proper lessons, and a document uh, stating that they don't have like problems with the justice, and that's it. If you have money, you can buy a gun. And most, 70% uh, of the women that were murdered last year, uh, they were victims of uh, firearms. So, so far, what I say that we can do from here, from Scotland, is to raise awareness socially speaking, and also if you as here start to combat your fake news, this will be uh, mirrored there in Brazil. So that's it, please stop your fake news here because it will help us there. That's it. Thank you. Thanks.